How is everybody this morning? Great. Nice and warm in here. Better than outside. My first question for you is, have you ever heard the quote, a picture is worth a thousand words? Yes. Everybody's heard that quote before? <laughs> My second question is, how many of you have made a vision board in the past? All right. How many of you have never made a vision board? This is your first time. Okay. Excellent. This is going to be a lot of fun. I really want you to be able to spend the majority of your time working on your vision board since we have all the great supplies pulled together and everything that you need to create your 2018 vision board, but it's kind of pointless to do the vision board if you don't know why you're doing the vision board. And so I thought it would be helpful if I spent maybe 15 or 20 minutes explaining the why behind the vision board before we just jump into the creation part. So let's go back to this idea of a picture is worth a thousand words. Why do you guys think a picture is worth a thousand words? Like why is that even a quote or something that people say? It lasts forever. Okay. In what sense? Tell me, tell me more. It lasts forever. What does that mean? If you take a picture, you can look at it later. Ah, okay. Cool. Yeah. So like you can take a picture and put it in a frame or a scrapbook and mm -hmm. you'll always have it to look back on or on your phone. How many of you go back and look at mm -hmm. pictures on your phone? Mm -hmm. That's always fun. Why else is a picture worth a thousand words? Because the memory, you can, there's so many words associated with the memories of those pictures. Yeah, so you can access a memory without having to like think about all the stuff around the memory. It's just like it gives you a feeling yeah. and you remember whatever the thing was. Yeah, that's good. What else? The picture actually just speaks to you and it gives you life. It's like it gives you life and it just gives you the vision of wanting to do the thing in the picture. Yeah, absolutely. It speaks to you, and we'll talk about it a little bit more. What it does is it, it really goes straight to your emotional center, and we make decisions and move through life using our emotions as our guide most of the time. Um, we think that we're, like, so rational as human beings, but generally we're not that rational. We tend to play more towards making decisions based on our emotions. So pictures tap right into that emotional center. Yeah, so that's good. You guys have pretty much summed everything up. So there's basically three, three things that the vision board does for you. And the first thing that it does for you is that it helps you to clarify what you really, really want. And I've said this several times. I always say it in orientation when we talk about goal setting. But clarity equals power. If you don't know where you're going, it's kind of impossible to get there. And then the other thing is, even if you have an idea of where you're going, how do you know if you've gotten there if you don't have clarity on what the destination looks like? So I think of it as like, if you don't know what you really, really want out of your life, and sometimes you're clearer on some things than others, right? And that's totally fine. But it's kind of like driving around in your car without your GPS. It would be just like wandering around the streets of Atlanta through traffic, but like never really actually arriving somewhere. And yes, there should definitely be enjoyment in the journey to get there. However, as humans, we like to achieve. Like part of our core identity is we like to accomplish things. So when you can identify the thing it is that you want to accomplish, one, you're gonna know when you've accomplished it and you're gonna feel that sense of pride. And two, it helps to direct your thoughts and your energy. Because if you don't, consciously decide on what you want for yourself, what happens is you do what I call living by default. And so you see what everybody else around you is doing. Have you ever heard that quote that you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with? Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard that? Mm -hmm. So who you surround yourself with, the idea is, is very important. And if you're not intentional about where you're going, you're gonna just do what everybody else around you is doing. And if you look at the news and you look at the things, some of the things that are going on in our country, I'm not sure that those are the things that I want to be spending my time on. So if I give my brain a direction to go in, then it helps me to stay focused and it helps me to leave all that drama behind. And it helps me to get more out of life so that I feel a sense of enjoyment and a sense of fulfillment along the way. So it helps you identify what you really, really want. How many of you have already decided on your 2018 goals? You at least have some of your goals written down. Okay, good, pretty much everybody in the room. That's an important thing for you to bring into this is that 
those goals, um, even if you didn't bring your written goals, hopefully you can either access them somewhere or you have them pretty well in your head that you know what they are. But thinking about what you really, really want at this stage of the game in the year is really important. And I know a lot of people set New Year's resolutions, but do people tend to keep their New Year's resolutions? No. Now, generally by February, like 70% of people are not even working towards their resolutions anymore. Why do you think that is? Why do people give up on their New Year's resolutions generally? They set too high of a standard. A lot of times they do. They just set themselves up for failure mm -hmm. before they've even started. That's a big piece of it. Yeah. Any, any other ideas of why people fail? There's no right or wrong answer here. They lose sight of it or they're not, there's no one to hold them accountable. Yeah, they lose sight. So if you're not seeing what you're looking at, that's why the writing down your goals is a really, really important piece. It's basically 45%, you're 45% more likely to reach your goals if you write them down. Well, the vision board just kind of amps that up and takes it to the next level. So it helps you identify what you want. And then the second piece of it is, it helps you understand what it looks like and what it feels like. And this piece of feelings kind of goes back to what we've talked about, about how pictures help us access the, the limbic part of our brain, the emotional center of our brain. And since we're emotionally wired beings, we, like I said, think that we're such rational people, but we really make a lot of decisions in life of, around what our emotions are. And if we can tap into the feeling that we will feel when we have completed the goal, it's kind of interesting what starts to happen in the mind. First of all, because you put yourself in that feeling place, you open yourself up to see things that will help you to feel more of that way. And you almost emit a frequency, and I think of it a lot like when you're tuning into a radio station, and let's say the radio station is 102.9, and you're on 102.7, you get a lot of static, but as soon as you get to 102.9, you have a clear signal to that. Well, your emotions are kind of the same way. If you will start to feel the emotion that you want to feel when you reach the goal, you're emitting a frequency and a signal out that is already helping you to align with what you want. And we'll talk about why that's important in terms of the brain um, in just a second. So the purpose of the vision board is to help you get clear on what it is that you want and then help you to feel and see the things that you want for yourself. So the second thing is our brain sync in pictures. So this is kind of going into like the brain science behind a lot of what we just talked about. When I tell you to think of a house, what comes to mind for you? Your house. Generally a picture of either the house that you live in now or a house that you have lived in. Same thing when I say car in your mind, the first thing that pops up is not the word C-A-R in your mind. It's probably the car that you're currently driving or maybe you're thinking about your dream car. So our brains naturally are wired to think in pictures and when we, when we bring in a vision board and create a vision instead of just words for our pictures, then we're starting to tap into the way that the brain naturally thinks. So when I have to read my goals, I have to read them and I have to process them, but if I have a vision board sitting on my wall, I can just look at them and feel them. You see what the difference would be there? Um, so I want you guys to kind of start thinking in terms of how do these pictures that I'm putting on my board make me feel and how does it make me get to a place where I'm getting closer to reaching my goals, right? So our brains naturally think in pictures and when we think in pictures, again, it kind of helps us connect with that emotional center. And then the third thing that happens is this this part of the brain that's at the base of your spinal cord called the reticular formation or the reticular activating system is basically the filter for your brain. So in any moment, you could be pulling in through your senses. So it, it monitors your, your senses, all of your senses except for smell. So smell goes directly to your emotional brain. So think about a smell when you smell a smell like a cologne of an old boyfriend or blueberry muffins or cinnamon, it takes you back to a memory instantly and makes you feel a certain way. That's why things like aromatherapy are like real things. Like when you smell certain scents, it lights up certain emotions in your limbic brain. But the other four senses go through this 
basal, this not basal ganglia, this reticular activating system, and it acts as a filter for your brain. So basically, whatever pictures you give to that part of your brain, which is kind of the link between the subconscious and the conscious mind, it's going to filter out the things that you need to notice. So, for example, I am currently doing the Whole30 program. I've told some of you guys it's been an interesting week doing that, but the premise of the program is basically you eat only fruits, vegetables, and meats. That's about it. Like, no, no refined foods, no processed foods, no nothing. So what's happened with my reticular activating system is, first of all, I have to go to the grocery store like at least four times a week with this because you always have to buy fresh food um, and, you, and so much of it. But I walk into the grocery store now and I've never noticed so many fruits and vegetables in my whole life. I'm like, was this always here? Like the whole time that I've come to this grocery store once a week for the last three years, all of these fruits and vegetables have always been here. They have, but since I'm not filtering through this experience of a Whole30 diet, I didn't notice as much. But now I really need to notice that. My brain needs to pay attention to those things because that's part of how I'm going to survive these 30 days. Um, now my mind actually notices more of them. The same thing happens when you're thinking about it getting a new car. You start to actually see that car on the road way more because you're like well shit do i want this car because now it seems like everybody's got this car so definitely happened with me with the last car that i bought and and now that you have the car you certainly notice your car on the highway a whole lot more but the same thing happens with your goals so unless you tell this part of your brain to change its filter it's going to continue to notice things that it's always been noticing before if you want something different in your life, you literally have to retrain your mind. And this is a big part of the mind that you, that you need to retrain. Anybody have questions on any of these three points of thinking in pictures, clarifying what you want, reticular activating, reticular activating system, the brain? I have a really cool video I want to show, but I don't think it will show good on this video. So what I'll do is I'll just upload it and send it to you guys um, with some other resources at the end that will help you understand this filter of the brain um, a little bit better. Okay, so now we're going to move into making your boards. And there's a million and one different ways that you can do this. And I wanted to show you my board that I finished yesterday. So. I went through this phase where I used to like paint. I don't know what kind of phase this was. This was way before I had kids. Like, you know, it's just something I did in my creative time. And this was some funky canvas I had up in my attic where I took this map of, I think it's Prague. I can't even tell what city it is. Um, so I just kind of went over that. For the last couple years, I've just reused these old canvases that I had. But basically, my format for doing the vision board for the last two years that I think works really, really well is to put activities that you want to participate in, pictures of things that you want, but more than anything, the way that you want to feel. Because if you'll, if you'll find the pictures that make you feel the way that you want to feel, you're tuning into all that brain science that we just talked about and you're really helping to open up that filter of your brain. Um, and you can lay this out in any way that you want. For some people, this would be way too busy because they like to see space. So if you'd rather have space on yours, that's perfectly fine. There's basically no right or wrong way to do this. Um, and you can put like things together. You can mix everything up. I generally like to put the pictures on first and then fill in with the words um, just because they're typically smaller. And these don't have to be things that you want to complete this year but more so ways that you want to feel this year, things that you want to participate in, experiences that you want to have. So that kind of gives you a general outline of how I worked my vision board. And then I will talk you through, <coughs> I don't know where to put this, I'm just put this down here. This is a really cool tool that everybody has on your table. There's actually a checklist to help you. Yours looks like this on the front. And this is from Jack Canfield's website, another resource that I'll post for the people that are on the live video. Um, but it gives you how to make a vision board in six steps, which is what we've already talked about and all the supplies that you have in front of you. 
And then there's actually a really good checklist. So 21, I think it's, maybe it's not 21. I think that, I think I'm making that number up. Well, it says 21 ways to make your vision board more powerful. So maybe there are 21 there. Um, but you can read through this list to help you make sure that you're making the most effective vision board possible. So a couple things on the list. Um, my vision board depicts goals and dreams in all areas of my life or in just one specific area that I want to focus on. So I chose to put everything together. Some people choose to do two small boards, one for work and one for home. Um, so however you guys want to do it, we have small boards and we have big boards today as well. Um, there are positive affirmations, inspirational words, quotes, and thoughts. My vision board is neat, and I was selective about what I placed on my vision board. I'm not so sure mine's neat, but it, it works for me. I spend time, so once you make it, there's some important things on here around spending time with your vision board. So once you make it, you need to actually look at it and think about it so that you're, again, kind of retraining your mind and opening up that filter of your mind. You don't want to just make it and then never look at it again. So you're going to want to make it and put it in a place that you see it on a regular basis. And then I wrote down the date that I created my vision board. So I think that's really important. I'm gonna go back, I haven't done that yet, but on the back, write the date. Cause there's always really cool stories. Even for my vision board last year, there's a, a word that I put on there that said dream chaser. And now basically that's what I'm doing with everybody is helping them chase their dreams. And when I did the vision board, I had no idea that this opportunity to do what I'm doing right now was even available. So pretty powerful stuff that you put on your vision board. No, and Gary, the worst part of that is the green leaf logo oh, that yeah, you yeah. have at the corner before you even knew us is on your vision that, board. No, that was actually in a scrapbook that my students at the college I taught at made for me 10 oh, years ago, okay. which is even crazier because I didn't make that. They made the collage for me and it was in there. I was like, wow, that's pretty, that's pretty crazy. Right? When yeah. I saw that, I was like, wow. So is everybody ready, or do you have questions? Can you have an extra one? Yes, you can have mine, or there should be another one. And then, um, for those of you, that's me. I was like, is this making snow? Or like, we're gonna have sex? Oh my is god! Be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but so, I looked around, I was like, no one else has sex and stuff. So maybe it wasn't. All right. So on the live video, I think what we'll do is. Um, I'm just going to kind of go around and show you the supplies that we're using and everything, and then I'll probably cut us off, and then um, we can come back on maybe one or two times in the middle to show you the progress that we've made, and definitely at the end we'll post a picture of everybody's vision boards. Do you guys on the live have any questions for us? If so, just type them in. I'll be able to see them. All right. So we'll sound off here and then we'll come back on later on. Talk to you guys soon.